very good evening. Welcome to BCN News. Leading our bulletin tonight, the government is about to bring into force the Water Wellhead Protection Regulations this year under the Water Act 2012. The Wellhead Protection Regulations will impose zoning areas around the water bores with restrictions on certain activities that may or can cause contamination to the groundwater. Esther Pavihi with this report. The first zone, or Zone 1, is an area within a distance of 50 metres radius from the centre of the borehole. Zone 2 and 3 will be from a distance of 100 and 150 metres from the borehole. When we reviewed the, uh, updated the Water Resource Act in 1996, and then when it was come in force with new Water Act 2012, we applied the integrated water resource principle in, in, in the uh, managing of our underground water. In that time with the uh, main principle act, the uh, regulations that are supposed to come out from it basically focus on the key risks, uh, the activities uh, that has been um, the most risky one in terms of pollution of our groundwater. The regulation is helping us to work together with the people uh, sectors in relation to that protection of our groundwater. The regulations prescribes a list of about 24 restrictions on activities from within Zone 1, which is 50 metres radius from the borehole. And these activities include burial or of human remains and any burial or, or disposal of animal carcass extractive or mining industries, commercial livestock, hospitals, fuel or petrol stations, piggeries and tourism operations of more than 10 beds, to name a few. We had the uh, consultation last year with the landowners, all the landowners here in, in Niue and also the uh, village councils uh, in terms of what we are looking at uh, putting this uh, wild head protection, poor, poor pump protection uh, regulations to become enforced. And majority at that time was um, agreed because of the risks of any contamination uh, to our water resource and maybe a risk of our public health and, and, and so forth. So we, after the consultation, we developed this uh, legislation. Uh, there are questions that was raised. And so the purpose of next week for us to confirm those uh, uh, things that we've been uh, come up with inside the, um, the regulation. The Ministry of Infrastructure will be holding a public consultation next week, which will include landowners, after which the regulations will be presented to Cabinet for endorsement. Rainwater harvesting as part of climate change adaptation for Niue is the focus of a consultation this week. This is part of a regional project called Scaling Up Pacific Adaptation, which covers 10 Pacific Island countries. The project is being funded by the European Union and being implemented by the Pacific Community in partnership with the University of the South Pacific and the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Programme. The project focuses on climate change adaptation in five different sectors, water, agriculture, health, coastal protection and marine resources. In a, a, a previous project in Niue, uh, also funded by the European Union, we worked with other partners to um, construct the moulding facility that moulds the water tanks, but now also the septic tanks, um, as well as work with um, the water department, the environment department, climate change, to install many of the tanks and also to do some water quality work, some training, some education and awareness, some training on maintenance because that's key for anything in infrastructure. Climate Change Officer Charlotte Pihingia says New is focusing on rainwater harvesting, building on what has been done so far on the island. Rainwater harvesting, it provides uh, that alternative to um, households accessing water. Um, so say for example, um, during uh, power outage, uh, where there's, um, there's that reliance on power to, to reticulate water to our households. Um, with the power outage, uh, most of the households on the island um, don't get to access water or there's uh, uh, minimal pressure coming into their systems. 
So we see this um, project um, as an adaptation measure um, to that it's providing an alternative way of accessing water um, in each household. Water infrastructure on the island also needs to be upgraded. We recognise there's a lot of needs in UA for the water sector. Uh, some of them really large scale in terms of um, some of the water infrastructure has been around for 50 years or more and even with the best maintenance uh, after that sort of time span it sort of needs replacing. So we're really working to see obviously we don't have the funds to do that sort of scaling up but we're sort of trying to work to complement when that happens in the future so there'll be a lot of training capacity building filling in gaps and um, education and awareness never stops and with previous concerns regarding health risks the project manager says there needs to be regular monitoring of the water quality I understand there have been occasional um, incidents in the past when the Department of Health has had to issue um, boil uh, notices to the public to boil their water because there might have been um, some sort of contamination, maybe from tree roots growing into the system or something like that and allowing bacteria to come in. Um, so I, I think with every country and every water resource it's always necessary to do continual testing and be vigilant and maybe through this project depending on this consultation and what the government decides there may be opportunities to help that monitoring and that vigilance. It will be a hive of activities at next week's Constitution Day celebrations. The government has confirmed the program of activities in celebration of New Year's 45th anniversary of the Constitution. On Friday the 11th, there will be two events. The traditional vodka fishing at Sir Robert's Rex Wharf starting at 5 a.m. Then at 10 a.m., the Aliutu Hall will be the venue for the Women's Club Fabric Painting Expo. On Saturday will be the Avasele Annual Show Day. On Sunday is the pre-Constitution Church service at the Ekalesia Niue Millennium Hall, starting at 6 p.m. organized by the Ekalesia Niue and National Council of Churches. The government has approved two days of public holidays for Thursday 17th and Friday 18th. On Thursday, there will be a flurry of activities, starting with the Niue Island Fishermen's Association Canoe and Boats Fishing at the wharf from 5 a.m. At the same 5 a.m. start will be the annual Constitution Walk for Health, organized by the Health Department at the Niue for O Hospital in Kaimisi. And at 1 p.m. there will be a rugby league game at Paliasi between the visiting teams of Auckland Niue and the Niue team. On Friday is the National Show Day, which will feature the World Food Day and the Business Expo at the Paliasi School Grounds. On Saturday 19th, We'll begin with the traditional vaca races starting at 6 a.m. at the Sir Robert Rex Wharf in Al Alofi. Then at 1 p.m. is the national flag raising ceremony at the Fale Fono, where all guests are expected to be seated by 1.30 p.m. On Sunday, 20th of October, is the pre-Gospel Day Village Church services to be held at every village Ekalesia Church around the island. The last two events on the government's constitution calendar will conclude with the Mutalau Village Show Day on the 26th and on Monday the 28th of October is a public holiday for the Gospel Day to be held at the Ekalesia Niue Millennium Hall at the Lofi starting at 10 a.m. The information on the program was provided by the Taonga Niue Department of the Niue Government. And for the first time, young entrepreneurs will feature at the Business Expo in next week's Constitution Day celebration. Coordinated by the Chamber of Commerce, Business Development Manager Ray Finlay says the expo is to assist the private sector in showcasing their goods and services at the National Show Day. We have two marquees uh, for National Show Day. One is our Business Expo, which will be a variety of um, food businesses, services, uh, arts and crafts, um, private sector businesses. It is a busy time for everybody, um, but we've got a good lineup going in there. We do still have a couple of spaces available if private sector businesses want to come along and profile themselves on National Show Day. And um, of course, if they come in as part of the Chamber Business Expo, everything's provided for them, which makes it a whole lot easier for them. 
The young entrepreneurs are Year 10 students that the Chamber has been working with during the year. These students will be showcasing their business projects, which they have developed throughout the year. So the Young Entrepreneurs uh, Program, one of, one of the sort of key outputs for the Chamber of Commerce is to um, work in the area of entrepreneurial education. So what we want to do is, at, at as early an opportunity as possible, um, to introduce our young people to opportunities in the private sector, on the basics of how to run a business, on what opportunities are out, out there for them as far as career choices go, um, understanding how a private sector business works and what their role in it can be. The Business Expo will be held next Friday, October 18th at the New Air High School grounds. Come along to the National Show Day. Um, it is a great showcase of New Air and also with the Business Expo and um, see all of our wonderful young entrepreneurs and junior entrepreneurs showcase the, the little micro businesses that they've been working on all year. Concerns have been raised by fishermen and some charter fishing operators that the public winch located at other cellar ramps sometimes cannot work due to power or equipment failure. Esther Bavihi with the details. The winch is installed by the Fisheries Division of the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. And one of the fisheries officers told BCN News that they are aware of these concerns and have made their investigations. They found that the box, power box located at the site had been accessed by someone and the power turned off. This has created issues for boat users when they need to use the winch. Fisheries Niue says that the winch is put there to provide an alternative access for boat users during the times when the main wharf in Alofi is not available, for example, or during boat days and in times of bad weather. BCN News contacted the government's regulator for Niue Power, who said that he was not aware of these concerns, but he cautions the members of the public that they should not be tampering with Niue government power equipment located around the island. The Avaseli Village Council also share these concerns and remind the public who visit the Avaseli ramp not to touch any. <coughs> Again, the Avaseli Village Council also share these concerns and remind the public who visit the Avaseli ramp not to touch any of the equipment there. The running costs of power and winch maintenance is paid for by the new government. The Fisheries Division says that the winch will be dismantled and removed in a few weeks' time for cyclone season. This is Esther Pavihi for BCN News. And finally, the Niue High School decided to mark the Rugby World Cup year with a day of sports games yesterday before the schools closed for the holidays at the end of this week. According to the principal's office, the boys played rugby sevens and the girls competed in netball. The four sports teams, Pua, Langakali, Kieto and Moya, competed to find the champion school sports team of the day. And that's your BCN News for tonight. Thank you for joining us. Do join us same time next Monday. Until then, have a safe weekend.